Hi, I'm Dan Riggler from Apothecary's Garden and today I'm going to show you how to prepare a tincture of civet. Civet is part of the family of Animalix in perfume work, um, which means it's a fragrance material that's sourced from an animal. There are approximately six types of Animalix um, that are mostly used, uh, ambergris, civet paste, beaver casters, hyracium, muskrat musk, and uh, sometimes bee propolis is also considered an animalic since it's sourced, it's not a botanical ingredient. All the animalics uh, extend the life of perfumes, um, duration, they act as musks, um, most of them contain pheromones, um, they add dimension to a botanical perfume, uh, sometimes radically so, they can transform uh, a botanical perfume and uh, they're traditionally used in, uh, in medicine. Uh, they've been used for hundreds if not thousands of years in uh, different traditional medicine systems. When using uh, Animal X, um, especially with civet and deer musk, there are issues of ethics and um, animal welfare and uh, each of us we have to use our own moral compass and uh, decide for ourselves. Uh, for more information on the ethics of using civet paste and a little bit of history you can see uh, my blog at apothecariesgarden.com. Now I'm going to show you how to prepare a civet tincture. Civet, like all the other animalics, cannot be distilled. Um, the only way to extract the aromatic properties of the animalics is using a solvent and which is usually alcohol, um, ethanol, 95-96% uh, purity. There are many different ratios of alcohol to paste that have been used in the past anywhere from one part paste to 10 parts alcohol and all the way up to one part paste and 130 parts alcohol. Uh, I prefer a ratio of 1 to 40. I find it gives me the best results, the sweetest and most intense uh, balance of uh, fragrance. Civet paste contains a lot of fat, so um, we need an intermediary material that's going to help break it down and uh, make it accessible to the alcohol. Um, it could be sand, uh, it could be sandalwood powder, or traditionally you would use orris powder, the, the aged powder of the iris rhizome, um, which is what we're going to use today. In this case, I'm going to make a tincture using 10 grams of civet paste, which is a, quite a large amount, but it'll be easier to see the process uh, with it. Here's our civet paste, and I'll be using orris root powder as the intermediary. So we'll combine both our ingredients, a ratio of one to one, equal parts, in a mortar. We can do it gradually or we can do it all at once. What we're aiming for is to create a roux, very similar to cooking, a very thick paste. Once it's homogeneously mixed, then we will slowly start adding the alcohol. So we'll blend in the mortar. Take your time and, and it needs to be as homogeneous as possible. The finer uh, the consistency, the more easily it will dissolve in the alcohol. Or so we've blended our orris root with um, our civet paste and we should end up with something that looks like this. Next step is to slowly mix in alcohol. Um, just like a roux, a little bit at a time. I've uh, measured out 400 grams of alcohol since I have 10 grams of civet paste. Um, and again, it needs to be blended very slowly. Um, just a little bit at a time. That could even be too much. Mm. 
And this is how it looks halfway through. And we'll keep grinding it until the consistency is the same. No bumps, no lumps. Um, we'll add a little bit more alcohol and thin it out. Again, making sure that it's consistent. Now that we've uh, got our preparation uh, evenly liquid, mobile, we can put it into a larger vessel. It could be anything. Glass is the best. It could be a mason jar. It doesn't have to be a fancy flask. Um, funnels usually help. And here we go. We'll need to wash out the remainder of um, the civet at least once. So we don't lose any material. Very expensive material. So we've uh, added alcohol, washed out our mortar, collected as much of the civet paste as we can. And now I'm going to add the rest of the ethanol to the tincture. Also cleaning out the filter, uh, the funnel. Um, it needs to sit for four to six weeks. Um, and the trick with civet paste is because there's so much fat, um, it, it has to be separated from the tincture before it's ready to use because it, they, the fats will go rancid uh, with time. So what we do is uh, freeze the tincture. So let it sit for four to six weeks. You can shake it or not. Uh, put it in the freezer for a day or, to, a, a day or so and uh, you'll see the fats congeal. And that's a sign that you can pour it through a, just a regular paper coffee filter. Um, the fats will stay behind and you'll have a nice crystal clear tincture um, to use. So the tincture will age and transform with time. It gets more floral, it gets sweeter. It's really an interesting product. Um, it starts out, I didn't mention this, it starts out as really stinky, but uh, a transformation happens with time. So um, after all is said and done and frozen and filtered, this is what our final product looks like. Um, beautiful, clear, yellow color. Um, again, you can play around. You can make it at a higher ratio of civet paste to alcohol, a more concentrated tincture. Um, but alcohol is basically the only easy solvent to use. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video with me, Dan Riegler from Apothecary's Garden. Please like my video, subscribe to my channel, and if you want to be notified of new videos, click on the bell icon above. You'll find links to my website, to my shop, and more information on everything I spoke about uh, in the description below. Leave a comment if you, there's anything that you'd like me to talk about in the future, and see you next time.